Before I melt down this old wax, I want to answer a viewer question about it. The question was, what makes some of the comb so black and dark like that? Before I answer that question, I want to show kind of the progression the comb goes through as the bees use it. Brand new, fresh wax has a very white color to it, or even cream, depending on the floral source. And as you can see, as they form the comb, they'll start to apply some resins from trees and plants. We call this propolis. This helps to stiffen the wax because when it's fresh it's very soft. Propolis is not only a stiffener and a filler for cracks and crevices, sometimes we call it bee glue, but it's also their immune system. They use the immunities that the plants carry to help their own immune system since they don't really have much immunities on their own. Now here's another piece of comb. I really like this one to show how much propolis they can apply. Now this one, you can see they've only started applying it to the outer edges. The inside is still very white and cream colored, but you can see some splotches inside where they've begun to spread it in inward. Sometimes this propolis gives the comb a darker color as they spread it around and put an even coating all around it. Now on this other piece of comb, it's not quite as white and creamy as it was when it was new because the propolis has been spread out more. And as I move across the comb here, you'll see that it gets darker. But it's getting darker and darker here because now we're getting into the brood section of the comb where young baby bees were being born. So what we're seeing here that's causing the darker brown is actually like a cocoon, a thin skin that the pupa leaves behind. So let's look at a really dark, much older comb where a lot of generations of bees have been born here. If I crack this open, we can actually see some of that casing or skin or cocoon that the bee leaves behind when it emerges. There you can see that as I pull it away, kind of a skin comes off the inside of the cell. Let's see here. Let's see if I can get another good one. Right there. That very thin, translucent skin here, that's the brown casing that gets left behind. It's so thin and adheres to the cell wall, the bees aren't able to clean that off. So they just leave it behind and becomes part of the cell. In each generation of larva and pupa will leave that behind and it just builds up and the more that builds up the darker the comb gets until it's a very black so it's such a dark brown color that it's almost so black now when I melt this comb down all of these little casings don't melt so they'll be left behind. Here's a nice one. And they'd have to be filtered out. Here's a good view at that casing, the whole casing, without any wax around it. This is one cell there. Pulling off two here. See the bottoms? There's one here.
There's no wax here, that's just the casing. There's, an, there's another here. So that's what gives the comb that very dark black color. Especially the older comb because so many generations of bees have gone through and been born out of it. Another interesting feature of comb that most people don't know about or aren't aware of, if we look at it edge on, at the top of the screen is the top of the comb. And you can see how the cells are at an angle to each other. Right down this, this ridge line, the center wall of the cell divides the two faces and you can see that the cells, they aren't parallel to each other, they come in at an angle, a downward slope towards the center wall. That's so that as they put the nectar in, it's very runny and almost like water, it won't run out of the cells. It'll flow to the bottom. And I think that's pretty cool.